So the next thing we have to worry about when we're looking at kinetics is something called the activation energy. Now I know there's a big diagram over here on the right and we'll look at that a little bit later but the first thing I want you to do is think about what your mornings are like. So are you the um, snoozer where you're hitting snooze 10 times and you're doing the math of how long can I sleep, if it's 9 more minutes, is it 18? And in that case, we would say you have a very high activation energy. It's going to take you a lot of energy to kind of overcome that bump of getting out of bed in the morning. Now, if you're a morning person, which I am not, but if you're a morning person, then you have a very low activation energy. For most of us, once we get out of bed and moving, we're fine, but it's that initial kind of energy burst that we're going to need to get out of bed. So let's clean up that graph a little bit and look at a few things in that um, chart that we saw in the first slide because there was a lot of information stored there. And there's a couple things that we want to point out. One is we see there is some energy of our reactants. In this case, we're at 50 kilojoules, and the exact values aren't particularly important here at this point. And then we see at our products, we have 25 joules. So we start at 50 kilojoules, whatever the energy, whatever our reactants are, and we end at 25 kilojoules. And so what we see is that energy is being released, okay, so energy is being given off, that's actually an exothermic process, so the net change in energy of this reaction is exothermic, heat is, or energy is exiting the system because we end up with less energy than we started with. Now, when we look at something that is endothermic, energy is going into the system, and what we would see is that the energy at the end so NRG at the end of the reaction is higher than start of reaction. Now notice we're only looking at two points. We're comparing this initial point and this end point. We're not looking at all at this region here in the middle, which we'll talk about in just a second. So endothermic, the energy at the end, is higher than energy at the beginning. That means energy is going into the system. Exothermic is that its energy is higher at the beginning, lower at the end because it is exiting the system. And for our change in energy, what we see is that we have 25, which is the final energy, minus 50, which is the initial, and what we get is a change in energy of minus 25 kilojoules. And that's true for all exothermic processes. That we're going to have a negative sign there. So now we're going to look at activation energy, and to do that, now we're going to look at this peak here in the middle. So we know that initial and final determine whether energy is net gain or net loss from the system, and we can figure out whether it's endothermic because energy is going in, or exothermic because energy is coming out. Activation energy is a little bit different. Activation energy is represented by this peak here, and it's the difference between our starting point and the peak. So this value here is known as the activation energy and we abbreviate that E sub A. So that's our activation energy. And it's always from the start point regardless of the height of the start versus the end. It's always the starting point going up to this highest peak and that's the activation energy. That's the energy we need to overcome to get the reaction started. Once it's started things are different, but we do have to get that reaction started and we have to overcome that activation energy. Now, if you are a non-morning person, then you're going to have a very high activation energy in the morning. If you're a morning person, you might have something that looks more like this. It's going to be a straight, more of a smooth line there, but you get the idea. And what we see is that the energy at the beginning and the energy at the end are the same for both of these curves. What's different is the height of that activation energy curve. So for this lower curve, the red line here, we see that our activation energy is much smaller than the activation energy for shown here with the blue line. So each reaction will have its own activation energy and sometimes changing the conditions will actually change that activation energy and we'll talk about one of those things um, later on in these videos.